And here we are, HCMC Fine Arts Museum. And oddly enough, I think this is my favorite piece so far. And it looks three-dimensional, but when you get to the side, you can see that it's actually a flap. Whoa, look at this. I didn't even notice it the first time. And that elevator. Now that is worth the price of admission right there, just to see that. Good afternoon. Welcome back to uh, Planet Doug. And I'm still in Ho Chi Minh City. <laughs> and I just emerged into the city at probably the worst possible time you could imagine. It's uh, just uh, around quarter to two, which means, of course, uh, it's the mad dogs and Englishmen scene I'm dealing with right now. Hot, hot sun uh, burning down right now. And I'm on my way to the, no thank you, on my way to the Museum of Fine Arts. And I don't think it's gonna turn into a huge expedition. It's like a kilometer away from my hotel. So my plan is just to stroll there, stop off at uh, places on the way or on the way back. Uh, one thing I want to do first is drop by a tour company because a Planet Doug subscriber booked a day tour for me. Uh, it's next week, Tuesday, I believe. And the tour is uh, what they call the Mekong River uh, tour. And as you walk around, you see all of these places. So for example, this is a tour booking place and um, they'll list all of these tours, like a city tour, Kuchi Tunnel, uh, Mekong Floating Market, all kinds of different tours here. And then uh, every, here's another one right beside it, Saison Travel. And they probably list all the similar sorts of tours, right? After a little bit of research about this uh, booking, I think it's a place called SST Travel, but I'm not entirely sure about that. But. I'm going to walk by SST Travel, show them my reservation QR code, and if it, if it is through them, I just want to see the place, meet the people. <laughs> I always like to do a little bit of reconnaissance. They do offer hotel pickup if you're in District 1, but for me, I, I'd rather go there in the morning rather than sitting around waiting, and I don't know when they're going to show up. I'd like to have things a little bit more under control. so. I'll talk to them and tell them oh, I'd like to come to your office first thing in the morning and then I'll get on the bus right at your office instead of you coming to my hotel. So anyway, that's why I want to drop by the place. And then after that, I will go to the uh, Fine Arts Museum. And with the museum, as with all museums, I'm 50% interested in the art, in the exhibits, and 50% uh, interested in the building itself. I imagine it's housed inside a very... I think I missed my street already. Uh, I have to turn this way. Maybe it's up here. Um, yeah, I imagine it's housed in a beautiful old building of some kind. So that's what I want to check out. And if I'm on the right path, I should see the original uh, Little Hanoi Egg Coffee place right around the corner. I went to uh, Little Hanoi Egg Coffee across the park, but I learned later on that it's actually the um, their second location. So I think this is the original right here. So on the outside, it doesn't have the name I'm looking for. But that could be it. Or it's down here. Oh no, there it is there. So little Hanoi is in the alley. <laughs> That's interesting. They, uh, looks like they're accustomed to people having trouble finding it. I love that. Look at that, it's so organized. It gives you a little neon sign. Sends you down here. There we go. 
Little Hanoi, the hidden gem, the unique culture. Yeah, same color scheme. So this is, uh, uh, there it is. Our second location is 160 meters away. So I went to their second location, but this is, uh, I've since learned this is the original. And I think they have a, a yeah, balcony or second floor up there. Yeah, there's so many of these amazing alleyways back here. Just duck down any one of these and you'll find all kinds of little cafes and restaurants, little hidey holes everywhere. So I'm on the right path. Yeah, I just double checked and my mystery benefactor booked this tour online through Kluke. And I don't know anything about Kluke. I don't have the app. I've never used it. But apparently it's a big deal doing things through Kluke. Whoa, look at that. The building, I mean, NGV How. I don't know what that could be. Look at the upper floors there, the rounded balcony at the front. Looks amazing. I wonder how much of that is in use, the second and third floors. Probably not a lot. The funny thing about the traffic is I know in, in a couple of uh, earlier videos, I was talking about how organized I found the traffic here, not nearly as chaotic or difficult to navigate as people led me to believe. But then uh, t for today, for some reason, I'm out of rhythm. I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm constantly getting in trouble at uh, every intersection. So <laughs> Down here, I might be able to find SST Tours and Travel or whatever their full name is. Well, if it was ever here, this is where it was supposed to be. But if it was here, it's not here anymore. I can't, I can't find it on this street. So we're going to have to start over again from scratch, track this place down. That's OK. Half of the fun is just trying to find these places or maybe all of the fun. So from here, yeah, I'm just going to keep going and uh, head to the Fine Arts Museum. I think I found it. Much bigger than I expected. I just recognized the building from pictures that I saw online. I think this is the Ho Chi Minh Museum of Fine Arts. Or, yeah. And uh, as, as I mentioned in uh, other videos too, one thing about Vietnam or about Ho Chi Minh City is that the signs, oh, okay, there it is. I was gonna say, rarely has anything in English. So you have to sort of guess sometimes, but it does say underneath, Ho Chi Minh City Fine Arts Museum. I just couldn't see it in there, see it at first. So yeah, here it is. I think the entrance is, uh, yeah, this is more what I'm used to. Like there's the big sign for the place, but it's only in Vietnamese. Bảo tàng mỹ thuật thành phố Hồ Chí Minh Bảo tàng mỹ thuật thành phố Hồ Chí Minh So you sort of have to recognize the name in Vietnamese in order to know that this is the uh, museum. But hey, look at the thing. I mean, if uh, anything ever looked like a museum, it's this building now. Got here just in time. Some rain is starting. I don't know what is going on with these uh, scooters. My guess is, I've noticed this with uh, quite a few businesses that they rent out their parking lots as uh, scooter parking areas. So you'd think, man, all these people are at the museum. The place must be jammed if there's this many people, but I suspect that all the people who park their scooters here, they aren't actually going to the museum. They're just using it as a place to park. And the uh, museum makes a bit of extra money that way. I'm just guessing though. For all I know, this place is so popular. All these people are uh, visiting the museum. And here we are. 
HCMC Fine Arts Museum. Is there a website and a phone number, details, address, things like that? And there's the, the building. Well, it looks like they might actually have a couple of buildings. Rules, suitable clothes and good manners are required. Visit designated parking areas only. No weapons, toxins, explosives. They do say that bulky bags must be left in the lockers. Do not touch, no food, drink, or gum. Clean and neat, speak quietly. Photography, videography, audio recording, or other activities for special purposes must be pre-approved by the museum. It's exactly the same as at the uh, War Remnants Museum, so it must be part of an organization. I'm inside the Fine Arts Museum now. There was, There is a counter at the front, a desk but there was nobody there to check tickets or anything like that. And there are lockers there. If you wanted to put your bag into a locker, you uh, take the key and that's fine. But so far, no one has told me that, uh, no one has told me I can't take video and no one has told me I can't have my little uh, knapsack with me. So, yeah, and I think in my general feeling is going to be correct that the building itself is going to be the star of the show, all of these large stained glass panels and the doors and then the balconies on every floor so right here i'm still just right on the the main floor that's the entrance there and i don't know exactly where to go first but this is a special exhib exhibition called eternal moments about uh, perhaps the life of Ho Chi Minh. I don't know if there's any special order that uh, you can explore the museum. Yeah, it does seem to be the kind of place that you just explore on your own. You find your own way. There's the where I came in through the special exhibit and then I turned down this hallway and uh, check that out high ceilings, narrow hallway, and then on the right here, a lot of balconies on this floor. For some reason, they're closed, probably to keep out the afternoon sun, I would think. I'm willing to bet that uh, throughout the afternoon, the sun pouring in through here would uh, heat up this place pretty badly. And then on the other side, you'll uh, find all of the exhibit rooms. And of course, there's no point for me to go through the entire museum with my GoPro running. I'll just fire it up from time to time, just to give you a sense of what the rooms look like and some of the interesting art that I come across. I'm still on the first floor, maybe the main floor, and uh, I'm enjoying the exhibits very much. One thing I think is really cool is that each of these little rooms has a door connecting it, so you can go from one room to the next. See that? There's, this one connects with that one, and then there's a larger opening, and then on that side there's probably, yeah, like a small door there. So you don't actually have to go out into the hallway. You just go from room to room, snaking along, following all these little openings and big openings. And the art, very enjoyable. A wide mix of painting styles. And something I've noticed so far, I don't know whether that is significant or not, but all the dates I'm seeing are all fairly old. So all the dates that I've looked at so far have been from the 40s. 50s and maybe into the 60s. So here uh, I have to go out into the hallway and then uh, I guess, oh, okay, that's the end here. And ooh, bathroom. 
but there's no way to get up to the next floor from here, so uh, we have to uh, backtrack. And we can do that by uh, moving through here. <laughs> Just retracing my steps through all of these rooms. And there we have a locked door, the mystery door. on the other side of the first floor you basically get a mirror image the same long hallway with the uh, the rooms off to the right and these are modern arts after 1975 same pattern oh look at that they're all connected right through this uh, central uh, doorway right down through there I made it to the end of this floor and just like on the other side there's no way to go up from here everything is closed off so now you have to uh, backtrack just no no great hardship I think as a just my own personal preference when it comes to art. For some reason, I do gravitate towards sculpture more than paintings. And maybe for the same reason, I often find myself drawn to paintings that have a rough surface. For example, well, here's a piece here that is sort of three-dimensional rather than just a flat surface, if you know what I mean. So again, my eyes would be drawn to the sculpture more than to the paintings for some reason. And in keeping with the three-dimensional rough surface idea, I sort of like this piece made up of uh, thick tiles and a grouping of masks over here. And oddly enough, I think this is my favorite piece so far and it looks three-dimensional. Two women were just in here talking about that from a distance. It looks like it's raised like the uh, topographic lines of a map. So it looks three-dimensional. And I honestly thought it was, and I was gonna say that's why I liked it. But when you get to the side, you can see that it's actually a flat. It just really does look uh, like it has texture to it when it's uh, actually a painting. But uh, yeah, I like that piece. Looks like river valleys. Maybe that's why I like it. So it looks like the, uh, the natural world. Pretty hot in here, just as a point of information. There's no uh, air conditioning and there are fans, ceiling fans. So far, none of them have been operational. So you may want to uh, take that into account if uh, my video entices you to come here could get uh, quite warm. And here as well is another piece I noticed when I came through, just because it's raised and bumpy, has sort of a three-dimensional feeling to it. Very thick globs of paint. Apparently I lied about the fans. Maybe I just didn't notice, as you can see, in this room, there is a fan running, and the one beside it was also running. But I just got the impression that there was no air movement. <laughs> but apparently, sometimes there is. But uh, yeah, this is in the, I think this is the last room on this floor. And uh, here, I really, I, when I was looking up at the fan, I noticed the uh, ceiling, how it has a double section. What do, you, what do you call this? There's a name for this part of a room. Forget it, and then uh, up above it, there's another ceiling up above. Classic uh, architecture from that era. And was this the last room? Yeah, oh no, there's one more, it looks like. 
No, this is the back of the beginning. And then this is the uh, lobby area. And now we go up to the second floor. Whoa, look at this. I didn't even notice it the first time. And the elevator. Now that is worth the price of admission right there, just to see that. I love that they've uh, kept it, maintained it. I'm sure it's not operational, of course, but just the fact that they still have the original elevator and then the bars here. Look at that. Gates on every floor. Wow. So I wonder what the age of this would be, the age of the building, and therefore the age of this kind of uh, elevator. Hmm. As I said, yeah, that elevator alone is worth the uh, price of admission just to see this stairwell with the elevator. Looks like it's still wired. Yeah, it has a wiring still there. Of course it's not. Up on the uh, second floor, came out onto the balcony. Beautiful building. And it looks like there's one more floor. I think we can, uh, visitors can go all the way up to the third floor. And a fountain still operating down there at the main entrance. All through the museum, I've been looking this way through the windows and from the balconies, and I saw this part here, which uh, is way at the back and actually connects the two wings. It's like a, a bridge connecting the two sides of the museum. And I was wondering how in the world people got here, and luckily for me, I found it. So this is the, uh, yeah, here's the a beautiful shot of the, uh, of the museum from uh, here in the in the back. When I was on the second floor, I think it was uh, some. Well, actually, it was when I was taking video of the elevator. Uh, a couple of security guards spotted me taking video. Uh, they were on the other side. They were on the other stairwell from where I was. And then the one uh, one security guard shouted at me. He's like, No, 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 no. I'm like, for a minute I was sort of startled because most of the time I feel like I'm breaking 10 laws. I feel guilty all the time. I always feel like I must be doing something wrong. So when he said, no, 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 I wasn't sure what he meant. Like maybe he saw my knapsack and was like, oh, you can't have a knapsack in here, sir. Or he didn't like me shooting video. Like, oh, you can't shoot video in here. Or the way I was holding my GoPro over the stairwell to get the shot of the elevator looking down. Maybe that's considered dangerous. You're, you can shoot video, but don't hold your camera over the railing. It's like, no, 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 you can't do that. Or it could be a dozen other things. Who knows what it is I'm doing wrong. But I eventually decided he must mean no video. So I haven't shot any more video since I've been inside the museum. But here outside on the balcony, I can't resist. I thought from here, I have to get a little bit of this video. So yeah, I think I'm just about at the end of the museum exhibits. I haven't seen this side yet. I'll walk through there and I think that will be the end of my uh, tour. And as I've said a number of times already, it's definitely the building. The building is the star of this show. And the only other thing I've noticed is that I think the people who take a really close look at the art. I've seen some people take a really close look and they end up in animated discussions with other people about the art they're looking at. All of those people, I'm pretty sure, are artists themselves. So they have a deeper understanding of what it takes to paint or sculpt and use all the different mediums here. Normal people like me, we just as go through, uh, look at everything. Um, but then people who have some talent of their own for art, they're actually discussing it and talking about the texture and the brushwork and the symbolism. But uh, we normal dummies, we, we don't know how to talk about any of that stuff. I'm just on my way out of the museum now. I was hoping to have a hot or cold drink here. 
This is the museum coffee shop, but it's closed. Looks like it hasn't been open for a long time. So it looks like it's uh, shut down. And uh, there are several more buildings. I suppose I should capture this one over here on video a little bit because it's quite impressive, the design of it from the outside. It's quite striking. I came around the corner and it took me by surprise. I was like, whoa, look at that. And uh, from, from what I can tell, most of the visitors here don't even make it down this far. So I've gone into this building and then this one as well. There's different art exhibits in all of them. But I think most people uh, content themselves with the main building, the one that's right at the front entrance. And uh, probably aren't even aware that these ones are here. But I didn't shoot any video on the inside because <laughs> I'm too worried about security guards yelling at me for uh, various infractions. But. So, yeah, on my way out. I'm comfortable shooting video out here. I don't think they're that worried about seeing a video camera out here. So, here we are. The Museum of Fine Arts. And uh, you'd think after a visit to a museum like this, I'd be in the mood for fancy, exotic food. But to be honest, um, I'm, in the I'm in the mood for a burger and fries. <laughs> I spotted a, a gourmet burger shop around the corner, and I'm going to head there. Something called Marcel. And I'm going to see if uh, I can grab a burger there for my, my lunch. All right, turning around, show you the uh, museum on my way out. And uh, back onto the busy streets of Saigon. Verdict? Planet Doug approved, very much so. 30,000 dong, for me, it's worth 30,000 dong just to see that elevator. The elevator alone, that was like an amazing thing to see. And the building as a whole, the architecture, the balconies, the windows, all of that is uh, really quite impressive to see. And then on top of that, you get all the art. So, and it's so near, right, if you're staying inside District 1, feels like it'd be kind of a no-brainer to come here one afternoon, or one morning probably. I think earlier is always better for Vietnam get here when it's uh, nice and cool as I said no air conditioning in there and occasionally you get a bit of a fan but uh, yeah it's pretty warm in there on the whole <laughs> 